Uh, welcome to Creating with Colleen, where I will teach you what to do. I may teach you what not to do, but I promise to teach you something. So what we're going to do today is we are going to explore this amazing bundle. This is called Poinsettia, Poinsettia Play Sweet. And again, it was one I was like, okay, do I need more poinsettias? Um, I mean, I have a couple stamp sets, but I, can, I only have one, I think, or two. So yes, I did. Let's just get that over with right away. So basically, with this suite, I even thought the samples in here were gorgeous that they would sell. I love how they have taken this poinsettia and put it with a wood grain background. Kind of a nice country Christmas card. Um, I just think they did a great job. So, of course, that was an easy sell for me. But then, let's see what's in the suite itself. So, in the actual suite, you have this gorgeous... Let me try to hold it, see if you can see better. You have this gorgeous designer paper. So, it is the front and back. You get 12 sheets to each of the six double designs. Um, it is 12 by 12. And what I absolutely love about it is that um, the dies for this suite also cut out some of the images on the designer paper. I absolutely love how Stampin' Up! has been doing that for us. Next, you have this plush poinsettia specialty paper, and that is like flocked designs. So it's kind of see-through flocked designs. You could sponge the tops of those, but again, the dyes match some of the poinsettias and the leaves in this paper. So it would make a wonderful accent. Then, of course, I'm going to show you the poinsettia and the dies separate because that does it no justice right there. But you have these gorgeous beaded pearls and these make a really pretty accent in the middle of your um, poinsettia. Definitely a must. And then you have the real red 3 8 inch sheer ribbon, which again, just coordinates with everything. And I think that's what I love about Stampin' Up! the most is I don't have to think but so far and I can shop in one place and it's all going to coordinate and go together. So here is the stamp set. It's called Poinsettia, Poinsettia, I'm going to make sure I'm saying that right, Poinsettia Petals. And it really is quite an extensive stamp set. There's 18 stamps in here. Um, and I love that they even have a thank you. So it's really not just Christmas. It's Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank you for making this a wonderful season. So it's even a thank you card. Warm wishes from our home to yours, and may magic and wonder bloom this holiday. So again, very, very um, nice set. Now for the dies, y'all know I always try to show you here. Let me see. For the dies, like I said, these are the, the stamps that are, is matched in here. And the ones that are in white, actually get punched out with the dies. So that's quite a few of these, which is really cool. And then what I love about the dies is if you're going to, oh, look how many. If you are going to um, use, I don't want to take this, let me see, take this apart. Let me take this one. If, oh, I've got them all together. You could tell I've been using texture. You know, you have the outline of a die. Let me show you these. All right, I'll take one apart. I put hold mine together with washi tape. So basically this outline will cut your poinsettia, your cardstock, and then you have texture. So you have the inside piece for a texture. So if you want the whole poinsettia to be together that is cut with the veins on the inside, I hold the two together with a piece of washi tape. Works perfect. Run it through um, your die cutting machine the whole all the time. So if you don't want it that way, Simply, of course, I would just leave mine this way because I always want the veins. But say, for example, you don't want that there. They really are two separate pieces. So you can see right here. Let me take my washi tape off. This is the one that would just emboss. This is the one that would cut. But when you put the two together, then they will... It goes a certain way. But anyways, then they will go ahead and emboss and cut at the same time. So just a really, really nice set together. So I have some samples that I will show you first, and then I'll show you 
uh, what we are going to create. This here, this is a card that was created um, by Marilyn Diamond, a demonstrator who um, we've adopted in our team. She's absolutely adorable. She's very sweet, and I love her card. So she made this card. We did a card swap. If you're in my team, we always try to do creative things together. In fact, tonight we are doing a Zoom event where they were given the measurements to cut their pieces. They don't know what they're making, but they picked their own stamp set, their own designer paper, and then we'll get together tonight at seven o'clock and create. So if you're watching and you're a part of my team and you didn't know about that, um, check out our uh, Creative Inspirations team page and you'll be able to be a part of that. So here she sponged, These, this was cut in white and she just um, sponged with Rococo Rose, I think she said it was, those gorgeous pearls and it's a gatefold card. So she's got her name on the back there. So you would open it up that's your belly band. And then when you open this up, it says, May Magic and Wonder Bloom This Holiday. And so when Marilyn did this card, again, I just I loved it. I just thought just another nice accent for the card. And then this one, and I apologize because I thought I had the person's name here. I always like to give credit where credit is due. But this was another card. Um, if anybody who's watching knows who did this one, please post their name, but here they just use two because there's actually like, I think four petals that go together to make this awesome poinsettia. So here they just did the two. Um, they use the detailed textures um, embossing folder and they did that, I don't know if you can see that, they did that on vellum, on our cardstock vellum. And I love it because that red shines through, but yet you see the detail. And of course, I just, again, think it's a beautiful card Cardstock makes me so happy. And then we have these, and these, these are the celebration, celebration Tidings dies with a poinsettia. This was by Donna Fiazon. Got her name stuck in there. So this was Donna's, and I thought, again, she did a beautiful card. And this is using some of the poinsettia designer paper. So what we're gonna make today, though, was one of my favorites. Now this, I got the idea, she did a, um, a video on her. Her name is Allison Barber, and she is a demonstrator in Concord, North Carolina. And I absolutely loved, it's a cone, if you can see that. And actually, it's a cone if you wanna put things inside, you know, and you can hang it up, I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. But when I put my tag on, a um, little happy mistake, but I don't even think it's a mistake, it actually goes sideways. And I thought, wouldn't that make a cute uh, table, not a centerpiece, of course, but what do you call those? The little uh, tags on the table, name, name setting. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyways, to have this sitting just like this on the place, place settings at your holiday table, you could put a couple of candy canes in there and it would just say Merry Christmas. So Diane, I know your head is reeling from this. Um, because Diane is very creative and does many, many things with fabric, with, oh my goodness, we won't even go into how many mediums. But I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make this. And again, I give Allison uh, Barber credit for it. The beautiful thing about this is it is made with a six by six piece of designer paper. So for every 12 by 12 sheet of designer paper you have, you're gonna get four. And if you purchase, again, I'm gonna make a fall one using um, this plaid tidings designer paper, which is wonderful. This is already cut. You can make 48 of them from one pack of this for $11.50. So if you're thinking of like uh, gifts for the people in the office, um, that, this is just great. You're not really slicing, cutting, dicing. It goes together really quick. So what you're gonna do is you are going to, this is the outside that I want. So I'm just going to fold this. You want to have nice crisp corners, but I'm just going to fold this in a triangle. And that was not a nice crisp corner. Let me get this right. Okay. And in my world, close enough will count. So you're basically, you have your, I'm sorry, you have your six by six. You just fold to make a triangle one side up to the other. But again, give a nice crisp fold. Got some glue on my paper. 
So then what you're gonna do is with my fold being in the middle, I am going to take this side, go right up to that crease, and I'm gonna crease that. It's almost like we're making a tight. Hold on, I got a little piece of glue on here. There we go. It's my new adhesive remover. Okay, so you have that. That's gonna get folded. And then do the same for this side. Do the exact same thing on this side. You're just folding it up to that score line. And then give it a really nice, good crease. So we had the six by six, folded in half. Fold these two sides in. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna flip it over and you're just gonna fold this side down on the top. Like that. So you can see how this is coming together. So when I put it together, I am just gonna take a piece of tear and tape and put it down one side. You want something strong. So I will put this right here. But tear and tape does work really well. Because again, it is strong. And it really, this is going to get on the back side. So it just depends on how much of a triangle that you want for what you're putting in here. Say if you have like a little Debbie cookie, you don't have time to bake, you wanna get one of those Christmas looking cookies, you can always make it a little bit wider and it's a little bit flatter when it's laid down. If you wanted to have more of a distinct cup, I guess you could call it, then you would pull it in and make it a little bit tighter. So that part is really all up to you. So I'm just going to take this off. And again, you know, I'm gonna go maybe halfway a little bit less. And then it's good once I have it there to just take your bone folder and push down on the inside. And that, my friends, is how easy it is to create the cone itself. So now for decorating, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna put this poinsettia together. So I have the four pieces of the poinsettia. And again, I hope you can see it, it has a texture in there because I used the two dies together. And first I just wanna take my bone folder and give a little bit of a curl so I don't have a flat flower. Let me try saying that. No flat flowers. I want it to have a little bit of uh, depth to it. So I'm just curling it like you would some Christmas ribbon. You don't want to go hard. You might be missing a petal. So just curl it as such. And then I think probably the easiest thing to put this together with, because it holds really strong, are some glue dots. So I have my glue dots here. I'm just gonna take the second to the largest. And when you put them together, as you know, just make sure that the petals alternate on each other. So there's one, get another one. And then my smallest one, right here. And here I have this gorgeous poinsettia coming together. Now you all know me, I like that little bit of shimmer. So what I'm going to do is with the shimmer, I'm gonna shake it up, y'all know I just get one of these little containers. And the only reason I don't use the Stampin' Up spritzers is because I need this in quantity. They're a little bit thinner. But I'll refresh your memory. I use the all-purpose ink, the champagne mist, and you want to put 70% alcohol in your bottle. Put the lowest content there is, otherwise it will clump up on you. Pour in about four or five drops. Always shake it up, because that can settle at the bottom. But you know, try it first. Everybody wants to know how many drops. Personal preference, and it just depends on what day it is. 
So I would say add some, shake it up, spray a piece of cardstock. If you want more shimmer, add more, but always remember you just can't take it out. So that's, that's my quantity. So I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna give a little bit of a spritz, and my poinsettia is gonna be gorgeously sparkling with that gold uh, champagne mist. Gives a little bit of a mist in there. So now I have two leaves. Oh, by golly, let's, let's spray them too, you know, just because we can, and because it's so pretty. So that will dry. And that's why you also want to use alcohol because the alcohol will dry much quicker than water where water is going to saturate your, um, your leaves. So to put these on, I will put, actually put it on the front. I'm going to put a glue dot on here. Wow, that was a strong glue dot. Took my cardstock. Let me do that again. Stampin' Up! makes an awesome product. Okay. So, oh, you know what? Let me give that just a minute to dry. Let me try that again. Let me try this one. Maybe my cardstock was just a little moist. There we go. So I have a glue dot there, and I'm gonna put a glue dot here. There we go, I've got one now. Okay, that's not it. Okay, let me teach you what not to do. This is on the front. All right. <laughs> and this was gonna be such a good video for YouTube. You know what, it still is. It still is. And I'm just going to pick them things off and put them on here. Because I put them on the back. I really want them on the front because I'm going to slide them up underneath my poinsettia. All right. No matter how you get your glue dots on there, go ahead and take it. Put them on the back like so. And then I will put this one over here. So that's my poinsettia. And then you're also wanna, gonna, going to want to use glue dots to put your embellishment on. And again, these are gorgeous. And I think they just make the project. So I have my glue dots. I'll put that in. And that is my poinsettia. So I still need a tag that says Merry Christmas. So I just have this piece of paper here believe it was, let me see, three quarters by four and a quarter. And I'm using the Merry Christmas that comes in at the Poinsettia stamp set. And I'm going to use this with Garden Green ink. So I take my Merry Christmas. And I want to put it uh, more to the right than to the left. So when I have that, because I'm gonna cut the banner here and I'm gonna be sliding this piece up underneath. So let me cut my banner, let me grab, okay. When I cut a little banner on the side here, I just do a little bit of a cut in the middle and then I go from corner to center. And hopefully that keeps you from cutting too much of your banner because you can't get it straight. So with this, again, I'm going to take, because I do want it to look like a banner, I'm just going to curl it this way, curl it this way, and there's my banner. So now when you go to put all of this together, you're gonna to put your poinsettia on with glue dots, I mean, uh, with dimensionals. And I want you to double up on the dimensionals because it, if not, it's kind of too flat. So what you'll do, what I mean by that, is you'll take a dimensional, you're gonna put it in the middle, Peel that off, take another dimensional, and you're gonna build on it just a little bit. So then when I have my little cone here, I attach it like that, and then I can put the ribbon underneath here. So again, if I want it to hang like this, I will put on this way, but if I want it as more of a table setting, then what I'll do is I can just take a couple glue dots, and grab them here again, put this on here because they are nice and strong, and then I can take my little ribbon and put, and put it underneath here. So that is how you make the cone. Now, if you want it as a table setting, see I didn't put anything in here, 
it'll lay like this, and I think it looks beautiful. You can see it up like that. That's the way it is on the table. If you wanted to make it to where it would hang, your banner would come this way. And let me show you real quick how I would put those in there. You could actually put glue dots and just put the glue dot in there. But you can also cut your ribbon at a little bit of an angle and take a one inch, one inch hole punch and just punch the back here. So now I'm really getting brave on you. I'm gonna to try to read this through. My hands are shaking. I should have only had two cups of coffee instead of three, but it was flowing so good. So I put it in from the back, and then I am just going to tie a simple, I don't know if we call these a sewing knot. Diane would know, because she sews. But it's just a simple little, little knot. So that will come through and it will not go through the back. And then on this one again, take it, go from the back to the inside, pull that through, tie another knot. And you don't want to pull real tight because you want it to get hung up in there. And then you could, if you want, take a glue dot to where both of those hold down. But then you would have your cone that would hang like that. So these are fun. If I didn't have my team event to get ready for tonight, I would probably sit here and make these with every designer paper I have because again, they can be used for any occasion. I think that's what I love about it. It's quick, it's easy, and it's any occasion. So let's do a fall one together. And again, I haven't done this one yet, so God only knows how that's gonna go, but we'll try. Um, basically, again, I'm using the plaid tidings. This time I'm using the plaid tidings six by six paper. And I love it because there's masculine, there's fall, there's feminine, Christmas, just a great pack of um, designer paper that you can use. So let's, let's give it a whirl. I want this side to show. This reminds me of candy corn, which I love, but I am loving the fall. Uh, weather that we are having so far. It has been gorgeous, and I even have all of my fall decorations up, which makes it all the better. So I folded that in half. Then I'm just going to take this, go up to my center score line. I'm going to do it this way. i got to get a feel which way you want to do it. And if it's hard to see, see what I'm doing? It's kind of hard to see where that score line is. So I'm holding this up so it can fit right into the center there. You can't always see on the designer paper. So I had this, okay? I went this way, went this way. Let me get in there a little bit better. There we go. I like your kite, turn it over and then pull this back. So when I have that, take my sticky strip, put it down the center. But when you're making these, you could do these for baby showers, wedding showers, you could, or even um, wedding treats. How about birthday? If you had some really cute birthday paper uh, for the kids or have you, you could do that. But now I'm going to take my piece off here. Oh, let me get it right. Okay. And again, we'll see just how I want to do this. Again, you can make it as tight as you want, as loose as you want. This one I did a little bit um, looser, so we'll see how it goes. Take your bone folder. Go on the inside. Now for my um, tag that I'm putting on here, I'm actually going to use the Gather Together stamp set. So this was a carryover from last year, but again, this is a great fall set also. Um, I love the season of thanks, the Gather Together, and of course I love anything that is fall. So I just took a circle from our 
uh, layering circles and I love the layering circles because you have a cut edge and then of course you have um, this edge here which is a scallop the two go together and since I had cherry cobbler on this side I'm going to stamp my words in cherry cobbler so basically oh it's an overhand knot thank you Diane now I know what kind of knot that to call it but here I'm going to take the season of thanks and I'm just going to stamp this on my circle. And again, I'm doing that in cherry cobbler so I can bring a little bit of that color in. Then I love the wheat in here. And I am going to stamp that in the new In Color Bumblebee. So I'm just going to take some of this. Let's put some over here first. And I'm afraid that might be too dark. Let me stamp off once. It's a little bit lighter, so that works great. I can even put a little bit more in here. I love the wheat. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you is how I did the pumpkins. Of course, by the magic of television, I did already cut these out because I have dies for these. But what I've done is I have the pumpkin pie ink pad so I stamped my pumpkin, but in order to put it on my cardstock, I was afraid that that was gonna to be too white, but I really, you know, what to do, should you color it? So I took my blends and I just took the soft suede, the dark, but you can use any color you want. I did do my stem and then I just took, I sometimes, you know, when I sponge, I usually sponge really light and then I'll, I'll push down to give it more of a smooth look. But I, I've had a lot of ink on that. But I like the texture of the sponge on here. So what I did before I cut it out, I just inked it up a bit and I just kind of tapped it. And what they did, it took some of that starkness of the white away, but yet it gave it some texture and um, filled it in just a little bit. So that's how I colored my pumpkins. Quick, quick, easy, just what you need. So since they're already cut out, I can go ahead and put my pumpkins on here. Um, man, I think I like one. I was thinking I could do two. Man, decisions, decisions. I don't know. Let me see here. Let me put that on there. Well, why couldn't it hang off? See, this is where you play for hours and you don't have hours. So let me just make a decision. Let me put this on. The black scallop, I'm going to go for two. I'm going to put this pumpkin, even though it covers most everything, that's okay. Put this pumpkin over here. I want to cover my words though. And then this pumpkin, of course, I'll pop up with the dimensional. So that can go a little bit lower. And again, if it's too money, oh well. Now, I did want the leaves in this die, in these, um, these dies, you actually have dies where it actually cuts it and embosses it at the same time. So you do have, you don't have to put the two together. But again, this coordinates with the stamp set and it is really nice. You have dies that cut out this large leaf, this pumpkin, and these pumpkins. And then you have everything else. So to soften this up a little bit, I think I'm going to use this bumblebee leaf. I want to hit it with a little bit of the pumpkin pie. And then I don't know if it'll make a difference. Oh yeah, it does. A little bit darker. Give it some depth. I have this here. So I'm actually going to, gosh, I'm big on my glue dots today. I'm going to take a glue dot. I'm going to put it on the right side, the front. And the reason I'm going to do that, goodness, I'm going to use uh, little dimensionals. Let's do that. Again, that will give it some depth too. So I'm going to take these baby, little baby dimensionals. I will take this one. I'm going to put it on the back. And then I will take this one and just kind of slide it in here. So I have the two. So this is my piece that I'm gonna put on to my cone. 
So I'm just gonna take with this, I don't have to have it stick out, so I am gonna use two dimensionals, but I'm gonna put them side by side. And even though one would hold it, you always wanna put two um, to keep it from turning around. So here I have my season of thanks, and you almost have like a little horn of plenty. So how cool would this be to use them for Thanksgiving and have a place setting at everybody's table and have a little bit of raffia in here and then whatever else you would want to put in there. I think that would be really cool. If I get started now, I might even be able to do it. So that is your finished, finished product. And um, again, you could use this pattern for absolutely anything. And they, are, they really are fun to make. So if you want to, I'm going to turn the camera around in a minute to wrap up. But if you want to place an order for the September, November 2020 code is right here. And if you are not already getting my newsletter, please go to my blog, creatingwithcolleen.typepad.com and request my newsletter. And then, of course, I will keep coming to you on Wednesdays. Let me put this one here, too. Okay. So, 